nerve pain in running and endurance sports. Long ago, as I've often said here on the podcast, um, I started running, and uh, probably my I started running my sophomore year of track season, so that's in the spring, and then of course I ran cross country and track uh, my junior and senior years, and I believe it was my senior year. I had a love of playing basketball, pick up basketball, and many sports, and I was riding my bike one day with a friend to go play basketball after we'd had practice, and we were just kind of goofing around as young men do, and next thing I knew, I'm laying on top of a big old car, I think it was maybe a Cadillac, and um, my chin was bleeding, and what had happened is I'd actually ran into a car, and the car was parked, and I just did a perfect rotated right on the front axle, and just hit my head, hit my chin on the car, and I kind of wrenched my hip. Um, this hip issue is pretty much what this article is talking about, nerve pain that I run far wrote about, and that's basically what I've been dealing with. I mean, I often say, you know, stay healthy, be boring, not epic, and I pretty much have stayed healthy, but I have had this issue um, when I was fast back in college days. I was running for UC San Diego and running 250 marathons. Um, I would have this hip issue, and it would mainly come up when I would have to sit a lot, and like we would often have to drive um, great distances to our races. You know, we lived, we went to school in San Diego, and all of our races were in LA. So it was a two, three hour drive, getting up at the middle of the, early in the morning, and I'd get up to the race. And by the time we get to the race, I feel like someone had stuck a nail in my hip. You know, it's kind of like a sciatic nerve type of thing. But it's definitely a nerve issue because, like we're going to talk about in this article, it says, stay the course, three types of nerve pain. Nerve pain is amongst the most persistent and difficult injuries to treat. And that's definitely the case. I mean, I can feel my hip right now, and it's still bothering me. You know, gosh, that was 1981, 40 years ago, and I still have issues with it. Um, I'd be able to manage it pretty good, but it's just always an ever-present thing. It's bad. Of course, when I was younger, it was really a problem. And it says, you know, kind of like in this, in the modern era, you know, you've got the Internet and medical support. Soft tissue injuries will heal with the time honor treatments of rest, ice, mobility, and strength and efficiency. Whereas runners with uh, nerve injuries and dysfunction um, often experience, and it just doesn't really go away. Chronic persistent pain, even after long dur- during prolonged rest, pain impervious to standard sports medicine care, and pain that fails to improve or even worsens with surgery. Um, they don't get better easily, quickly, or sometimes ever without specific treatment. And yeah, you know, surgery is definitely when it comes to pain. Um, you know, if it, you get surgery because of function and mobility, but definitely not from pain. And I'm, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I did have a degree in physiology from UC San Diego. But I really hear that a lot from Dr. Drew. And Dr. Drew, because people will call all the time, strung out on opiates. And like, how did you get on opiates? Oh, back pain. And then everyone always says, you know, I had surgery for the back pain. And then he always says, it doesn't ever get better, does it? So, you know, if you've got a back issue where you have almost no mobility, get the surgery. But don't get surgery in the hopes of curing the pain is basically what Dr. Drew says. And it's kind of what this article is talking about. You know, the nerves, um, you know, are interconnected, continuous in cells and tissues that flow from head to toe. A single nerve or neuron might be only t- three total cells that stretch from head to toe. And they specialize in one function. Um, they have both input sensation and outputs on the peripheral tissues. And so, you know, you feel feel things with your nerves. And so that's kind of like it is with a bad back. They can go in there and fix the bones and, you know, muscles or whatever, those kind of stuff. But you, if you mess up the nerves, you're just going to have that nerve damage. And you're just going to be out of luck. So, you know, they're definitely nerves are sensitive and do not tolerate excessive stretching or compression. Nerves that lose their functional mobility can easily become overstretched or compressed. With either, nerves can be easily irritated, and that's basically what the pain comes from, is that irritation. And sure, medications and stuff will help with that pain, but, you know, it's it's definitely a tricky situation. And then in this article, they talk about the different types of nerve pain. There's radicular, amplified, and dysfunctional. Reticular pain, which occurs when a nerve becomes irritated, usually at the spinal level, versus pain and other symptoms such as tingling, pin to needles, and a numbness elsewhere in the body. And, you know, I even had that to this day. And, of course, you know, I'm 57, so it's going to be an issue. And, you know, runners with sciatic, for instance, get referred pain that flows length of the sciatic nerve down the buttocks, hammocks, hammocks, hamstrings, and sometimes all the way to the calf and foot. However, with radicular pain, there is nothing wrong with the tissues of the hamstring, calf, or foot. Though it might be painful, it does not swell, and neither do the surrounding joints out of that. So, and then over time, you get to see what you call amplified pain, where... Um, this is common with like plantar fasciitis, 
um, overtraining, proper, improper footwear, and efficient foot striking, eventual treatment, some plantar patients fail to fail, fully improve. Deeper analysis finds they also have neuroge neurogenic signs and symptoms which amplify the pain. And I've known many people with the um, you know plantar fasciitis that they suffer with it for many, many years. And it's like I said, it's not like a, it is a physical thing, but it's not the bones and the muscles. It's the nerves and you know the nerves when they decide to go crazy they go crazy i mean you often hear you know someone who loses a limb you'll have nerve pain you can you know feel things like that so the nerves are definitely a, a goofy goofy thing it says here peripheral nerves in addition to soft tissues have become irritated and i call this a fender bender rule where in a minor accident it might look at like only the car's fenders bent but other less visible structures such as the tire light radiator are actually involved um so as we discussed, radicular pain is nerve pain, its purest form, a pinched nerve in the back causes pain down the leg. Amplifying pain stems from local nerves that have also, that has, along with the soft tissue neighbors, become strained or irritated. And then, of course, the last one is dysfunctional pain, is that is often due to multiple insults to the injury to the nerve. While other cases, examples have had, um, you know, you get a neck problem, and then it just kind of just all goes around. So, so why does it seem seemingly unrelated nerve irritation cause such dysfunction, and why does it pick that one specific area? That is somewhere uncertain. Specific tra tracts of neuro neurons, those responsible for specific body areas, are thought to be directly compressed, strained, or otherwise irritated. And the nerve response result is to send an inflammatory response to the area for which it's responsible. That it does, and in such excess defies comp convention and any true benefits. And, you know, that's the thing. You know, it's just going to... The body is trying to protect itself, and inflammation is one of the reasons it does it. And that's one of the reasons I tell people, you know, don't get so hurried to use ice um, and drugs because let the body try and take care of itself. You know, the inflammation and the soreness is your body saying it's trying to protect itself and saying, hey, stupid, stop doing whatever you're doing that makes me hurt. So that's kind of the, the keys there. Conclusion, it all matters. The most important takeaway is that we cannot blow off other aches and pains because they don't seem to impact our running. Neck and back pain from stressful work, poor posture, sitting too long might create or amplify a debilitating leg injury. And those chronic headaches or crazy stiff and achy hamstrings can be more than just an annoyance. How we run be plays the biggest role in how we feel on the run. So does how we live. Our whole body integrity is of crucial importance and something we must maintain for healthy, happy running. Invest a bit of extra time in spinal and whole body mobility. Monitor your post posture. Keep tuned in to what your body is telling you. Take care of the whole picture, and you might be able to run far for a long time. You know, I've been at it since 1979, and I'll hopefully continue going. Uh, I just saw that man do 88-year-old finish 100 miles, and, you know, hey, I wouldn't mind to be 88 and continue doing that. And so that's why, you know, my you just have to constantly monitor what's going on. You know, how do you feel here? You know, like I drive DoorDash a couple hours a day, but I make sure that I get out in the car and I make sure that I don't make issues worse than they already are. You know, if you're sitting in a computer, get up and move. That's why Fitbit's great. It kind of will tell you, hey, you do your 250 steps so you're not sitting there so long. And just, you know, look at everyday life and go, you know, is this going to be safe? Is this going to be an issue? Can I do this? Can I do that? So many people just kind of don't think and then they get injured. And it kind of all goes down to the my th three rules. Stay healthy, meaning, you know, always look at situations. How is this going to impact my overall health and my running health and longevity? You know, so stay healthy. Be boring, meaning don't do crazy stuff. You know, be calculating and figure out, you know, yeah, I could do this crazy thing when I was 20, but now I'm 50. Maybe it's not so smart. Like today I was door dashing and this young man was on a motorcycle and every intersection he was popping a wheelie and driving away. Well, you know, he's a young guy. He could get in a wreck, and he might recover. But, you know, if I'm on the – I don't know how you're going to ride a motorcycle at 57. I am even I, – you know, as you can probably see, sometimes I have my bike here in the background. And I pretty much only ride my bike indoors because I just don't want to hit that pavement. So, you know, stay healthy, be boring, and definitely not be epic.